This video is going to be a walkthrough of how I go about finding profitable niches for low and medium content books to sell on Amazon KDP that actually make sales. Welcome to my channel. And if you're interested in learning about how to make money online, particularly from self-publishing books on KDP or selling products on Etsy, then you're in the right place. Niche research is a huge part of my self-publishing strategy because not only do I want to publish books that I actually enjoy making and enjoy using myself and that I'm proud of, but also because I do want to publish books that people actually want to buy. And that's what niche research tells us. What people are interested in and buying, what niches are profitable or not, and how much money we could potentially make from publishing a certain kind of book. So in this video, I wanted to show you how I personally go about doing niche research. So this isn't the only way to do it. This isn't the right way. There is no right and wrong way. Everyone has different ways that they go about doing their niche research. But I thought that you might just find it interesting to see my methods and my thought processes when I'm doing this. Now, this video hasn't really been planned in advance. I don't have any niches that I've already gone off and found to show on this video or anything like that. I'm just gonna start fresh and give you a bit of a snapshot of what I do, how I start the process of finding niches, etc. There are a couple of tools that I do use to help me with my niche research. It's not imperative that you have them. You can still do successful niche research with no tools whatsoever and just use Amazon's marketplace itself. But I personally just find that they save me a lot of time during this process because I just pretty much want to get moving onto the actual making of the books part of the process as quick as I can because that's the part that I enjoy doing the most. But I will mention any tools that I use during this process and link them down in the description box below. Now the first tool that I like to use is BookBolt. If you are not a stranger to my videos or my channel, you know I've been using this tool for years now since I started publishing books on KDP. BookBolt is a niche research tool specifically for low content book publishing on Amazon KDP. And because it is so specific to those types of books, that's why I think it is so helpful. So BookBolt has a few different areas that you can do niche research within. And most of the time I prefer to start with the cloud function. The reason I go to cloud is because it gives you the top 100 or top 200. As you can see there, you can search through the top 500 books within a specific low content category. So the reason I like that is because I'm looking for books that are selling. I want to know what's selling so I can look further into that niche to see if there is potential, if there are other books selling, if it's got demand, if it's got high or low competition and those sorts of things. And with this section, you don't have to put in keywords if you don't want to. You can basically just search for the top 100 of whatever category of book that you want to look at. So to start with, I'm just going to click on journals and we're going to look at the top 100. I'm just going to drop the bestseller rank down a little bit because I want some ranks where it shows that the book is selling. So let's look for under 200,000. I generally don't usually go to notebooks because I don't often make notebooks myself, but it is still a good idea to look in there because you might just get an idea for a niche as opposed to making an actual notebook. And I basically just go through the books and see what's coming up and if there's anything I want to look into a little bit further. Something else you can sometimes look at is this keyword here and that might give you some ideas of keywords to search for to deep dive a little bit further. So we could maybe be interested in Christmas if you're wanting to do some sort of seasonal or holiday books. We could look at prompts, so maybe journals that have actual prompts in them. Composition if you're interested in doing composition notebooks. Ephemera if you're interested in doing ephemera books and so on and so on. So it gives you some ideas is there where to where you might want to look a bit further into. First couple of books are coloring books which is not the category we're looking in but the next one we've got is the sadness book a journal to let go so that's quite specific a lot of journals are to do with positivity gratitude mindfulness and things like that and this is more of a journal to let go of things so definitely a different take on it and look at that bestseller rank 344 that is insane so what we could do is click on over and have a look at this book it was published published in March and it's got a bestseller rank of 355. So we've got prompts to acknowledge your emotions, a collection of love letters. So it's not just a typical lined journal with a couple of prompts. It looks like it's got a lot of really interesting, helpful stuff in it. And that's not to say you shouldn't make a book like this. These probably are the types of books
books that are going to be good to make because the low content niche is getting extremely competitive and you need to find a way for your books to stand out. So by adding a bit more content into them, making them more of a medium content book where you're not just providing lined pages and prompts, you're providing some more helpful content in that book is going to provide your customers with so much more of an enjoyable book to purchase from you. And they've also got some self-reflection prompts again at the end of the book. That's super interesting. And so if I do see something that I find interesting, I just note it down. And then we can go into it a little bit further later on. I'm just going to keep looking down here. Gratitude Journal, which is always in the top selling books of journals by Pretty Simple Press. One Minute Gratitude Journal. ultimate book of savings challenges. Interesting. I see a lot of videos on YouTube about saving challenges. They're really popular and I had never really thought of turning it into a book before. That's a pretty interesting idea. It's got a great bestseller rank, 2,972, published at the beginning of this year. Take a quick look inside. Wow, that's really interesting. Obviously, you're going to have to put a bit more effort in to make those kind of pages, but that's a really cool idea. Okay, let's keep going. We've got a mum and me journal. These are very popular. These hear your stories. They're guided prompt journals for family members. You can give them to parents, grandparents, and it's just to get um, a really nice keepsake from someone special in your family. We've got a tarot self-care journal. These kind of gag books are going to start getting popular because they're funny gifts to give as part of a Secret Santa or Kris Kringle that you might have at your workplace or something like that. Or you might just want to get a funny Christmas gift for a co-worker. They start to get really popular around this time of year. Quite a few of these I see basically every time I do niche research. Uh, some of them are always just the most popular selling books. And then let's just look at something, a, a different category. So we can go to activity books. Let's have a look in activity books. We've got those funny things to do while you poo books, mazes, word searches, activity books for kids. We've got that scissor skills activity book. Some of the Christmas books are starting to come up the ranks too now that Christmas is coming and people are starting to buy Christmas books. So this one's quite niched down. It's a baseball activity book for kids. So you could take a look at that specific small niche. So not only is it an activity book, it's an activity book for kids and it's specifically for baseball. So then you could go onto Amazon, use some other tools to do a bit more research into is that a big enough niche that you could make a book in that niche as well and actually sell, make sales. And then another one there for space again. So you could look into the space niche, gymnastics, soccer book, and they all have great bestseller ranks. So they are selling. You just need to go and determine whether you think there's enough competition in there for more books to be in that niche and sell. That's a couple I've seen now in terms of a stroke recovery activity book. So that's an interesting niche to look at, specifically targeting people who have some sort of brain injury to help them recover from that.
and we've got one targeting teens. We quite often see them activity books for kids, maybe for adults, but teens could be a less competitive niche to get into as opposed to the kids activity books. Okay, let's take a look at a different, let's have a look at some planners. Planners do get popular this time of year as well, especially yearly planners, because obviously people are starting to buy planners for next year. But we also have a wedding planner using the swear word thing, as I always say. Don't know what it is, but people just love swearing on their books. We've got a monthly bill tracker or organizer planner. They have really great bestseller ranks. So that could be something to look into as well. Again, something that gets popular at the end of the year because people need a new tracker or a new planner for the next year. It's got a fantastic amount of ratings. Okay, so it's quite detailed in the type of things and the amount of things that, that the customer is going to be tracking each month. So quite a lot of effort's gone into creating that book. We've got an assignment planner for students. That would be very interesting to look into. I don't think I've seen an assignment planner for students, but it's got a great bestseller rank. We've got a cleaning schedule and checklist. We've got a planner book to plan trips to US national parks. That would be interesting to look into. And so you get the idea. This is the first step that I take. I just go through, see what's currently selling because what's currently selling is what's currently trending and what people are interested in at the moment. So then what I would usually do, I would have a whole heap of things. I spend quite a bit of time doing that. I'm just sort of condensing it down and going through very quickly just to be able to show you within this short video. But generally I would spend quite a bit of time going through all the different categories and looking at a whole bunch of different books because then we can go onto Amazon and we can look even further into that. So we can go even further into these books to see what other books are in these niches and what type of bestseller ranks do they have. If if you are new to publishing or selling on Amazon, a bestseller rank determines the popularity of a product in the store. So the bestseller rank helps us sort of figure out whether something is selling or not, or whether a niche is selling a lot. So if you've got a lot of books in a niche that don't have good bestseller ranks, you can kind of say, well, for some reason, people aren't buying those books or people aren't liking any of the books in this category. So then what I would do is I would usually just go to Amazon and I would type in whatever book I want to look at. So monthly budget planner. And from there we can see we've got around 5,000 results for monthly budget planner. Some of these are going to be books that aren't what we can make, like these spiral bound books. Some of them are going to be more like a notepad type of book, not a book, but a notepad. So we just need to look at the ones that are similar to what we can make. Still look at the spiral bound books because even though we can't make spiral bound books, we are competing with those books. So as you can see, we've got a spiral bound book here right next to a book that's published by Amazon KDP. So you're still competing with them. Customers don't know any different between what book is printed by Amazon and what book is printed elsewhere. So don't not look at other books like a spiral bound book thinking it's not your competition because it is because at the end of the day, when the customers on this sales page here with all the results, they don't know the ins and outs of how books are made and published. All they can see is I like that one that's spiral bound. I'm going to get that one or I like this one with the flowers. I'm going to get this one. And so we just go through and I have a look at what books are here and are they selling. To know if they're selling is where we look at the bestseller rank. So this little box here is a free Chrome plugin that I have installed called DS Amazon Quick View. And if you install that Chrome plugin, it will automatically pop the bestseller rank in the search results, which saves you a lot of time from having to click into each product and scroll down and look for the bestseller rank. It just saves so much time. So it is free. It's easy to install and it will help you save time to just see straight away the bestseller rank. So this first row of search results, we can see that this one has an 
amazing bestseller rank. The one that's published by Amazon KDP also has a great bestseller rank. And we've got these two other ones, Spiral Bound, also with fantastic bestseller ranks. So we'll scroll down, scroll down a little bit more. We've got really great bestseller ranks. So just even first glance here, I don't even need to spend too much time looking through these search results because I can see that people are buying these books. They're in demand. The competition's not too bad. It's not super low, but it's also not super high. And so if I am still interested because I'm happy with the amount of competition and I'm happy with the bestseller ranks, I would just sit and go through each book and see what is it that people like? Why are people buying these books? What do they like about them? What do they not like about them? So for example, I would go into each one, I would take a look at the inside feature to see what pages are in there. If there's no look inside feature, I usually scroll down to the reviews and see if anyone has uploaded images or video of the reviews. So there is a couple of videos that you could look at. For this one, if you wanna see more into the book, and I always look at the videos, I look at images and I read through the reviews. I go through the reviews and see, well, why did that person give it a four star? Why are they recommending it 10 out of 10? It's interesting that they give it 10 out of 10 recommend, but they don't give it five stars. That's kind of funny. I would go through and see what is the problem with this book? Why has someone given it a one star? Why has someone given it a five star? And just note down the things that people love so I can try and incorporate the things people love, but also look at the things people don't like and see if that's something that I can remedy and do differently with my book because that's one of the ways that you can help your book stand out is by doing the things that the customers like and want as opposed to making something that they don't like, they're not gonna leave good reviews and then future customers won't buy. Now, something else that I like to do as well is I usually take a look at the books that are going to be similar to what I can make. So not the spiral bound books and things like that, but I'll take a look at these ones that are published by KDP or they're just sort of like a paperback type of book. And I want to sort of get an idea of what's the potential possibility of how much money that I can make if I made a book similar to this and got it to a similar place as this. So similar kind of reviews and a similar kind of bestseller rank. I use a tool for that. It's a free tool. And what we'll do is we'll look at this one. So we can say, okay, this book ranks about 10,000 at the time of me looking at this book. How much does that equate to in sales? So I always just use the TCK publishing website, the Amazon book sales calculator. There's a few different websites out there that you can do this on and they're all free. So choose whichever one you want, pop in a 10,000 bestseller rank and we're selling a physical book, not an ebook. And we calculate the sales. Okay, great. So this isn't exact. Nobody really knows how many books that person is selling other than that person, but it kind of gives an estimate to help us make these sort of educated decisions on whether we want to go into a niche and whether we want to publish a certain kind of book. Let's say around 370 or even just say 350 sales per month is what this book's making. Now let's go back up and we'll see it's selling for $6.95. We need to work out the royalty of this book because we don't get $6.95. We have to pay the printing costs and we have to pay Amazon to let us sell this book. So let's go to the Amazon royalty calculator calculator. It's a paperback. I think it had 101 pages and selling for $6.95. So this book is making a $2.02 .02 royalty for every book that is sold. So they're selling it for $6.95. It costs $2.15 to print. And then with our percentage of royalty, we get $2.02. .02. We're selling 350 books per month and getting a $2 royalty. We can estimate that this book is making around $700 per month. And that's a nice little income from one book that you spend a little bit of time making, put a little bit of effort in and make a really good book. And then once that book's made, that's it. It becomes sort of like a passive income source. If you can get it to that point, of a 10,000 bestseller rank, you'll be getting you know, around $700 a month approximately while you can work on other books. And that is just basically my process. It is a process that takes a while and it is a process that you should spend a lot of time on because this is sort of going to really help your chances of creating successful books that actually sell as opposed to just sort of floating around making books that you don't really know are going to sell or don't really know if they even have a chance of selling because you don't even know if they're popular or if people are interested in them or if they're even making money. I would sit 
and spend quite a bit of time doing the niche research. I would go into every book that I'm interested in, do a more deep search on the Amazon website to see what other books are in that niche and if they are also selling, determine what their bestseller ranks are and and sort of guesstimate what sales these books could be possibly making based on their bestseller ranks. Having a look at the books and seeing if I can make something just as good as, if not better than what is already available on Amazon, because there's no point making a book that's going to be worse than what's already selling, because it just means that it's just your book's not going to sell if it's not as good as the rest. And then going off and creating the book. And I do that for hundreds and hundreds of books <laughs> to try and find niches. And sometimes these little searches will take you elsewhere. When you're in a book's listing, for example, I always take a look at these similar books and related products and things like that. And that's when I say you go into a rabbit hole, click on these things. If you see a book down here where you're sort of thinking, I wonder what that book's about for example this debt payoff planner I would then click into that one what's this about is this book making sales would I be able to make a book similar to this and go through the sales and stuff and sometimes where you start off you might start off as a monthly budget planner looking at monthly budget planners you end up in a completely different place with books in niches that you would never have ever thought of making before and that's kind of what your niche research should be just clicking on things anything whether you think it's going to come of something or not. And honestly, a lot of the time I click on books to go investigate a bit further and nothing comes of it. And I don't think it's going to be a good niche or it's not a niche I want to get into, or I don't think I can make a nice book in that niche or whatever. But you get a small handful that have real potential that you're interested in and that you do think you can make a good book in. And that is the point of it. You're probably going to find a lot more no niches as opposed to yes niches. And that's just how it works because you're not going to find every single niche is one that you want to go into or one that's selling or one that you can make a book in and things like that. So I do hope you did find this video interesting. Just seeing how I start the niche research process in real time and what interesting things and sometimes not so interesting things I come across and how you can sometimes find niches that you would never have ever thought about before. Just by letting yourself click everywhere, click on all sorts of different types of books and just go down the rabbit hole to see what you can find. Thank you so much for watching my video today and I'll see you in the next one.